Tipped Off, show 162 of the Yeah, Come On Show podcast. I'm your host, Southside Steve. That's my co-host, Brett Barney. Drinking water as always. That's what he does. He's a fluid man. And then looking like he just crawled out of bed with a stranger, our Coco host, Mr. Evan <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> I do look like I just did the walk of shame. I've got this unmade bed behind me. You're just like, hey, yeah, yeah. what's up? Oh, I got a podcast today. Sorry. Can man. we be can we be open to the people and let them know that we've gotten up early on a Sunday morning to do yes. this? We, we, yeah, we, that's we, why we all look and sound like this. By the way, I've got my uh my cup. Co- this is coffee. You have but... kids, dude. You have yeah. kids. Yeah, you were I, probably up anyways. Uh, like, like uh, Evan uh, sent a text going, are we doing this? And I was like, I just got out of bed. <laughs> so yeah, did I. I'm longer than Brett. I just look like shit. No, here's the deal. What you guys didn't realize is last night, or actually yesterday, my in-laws said, we'll take your kids. They took the kids starting at around 11 o'clock, wow. had them all day, all night, and brought them back. At nine 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 a.m., they said we're on the way. They pulled in the driveway at nine twenty-two, so I slept until nine a.m. Slept. You didn't give I, them a no returns. No, I didn't give them a no returns. And how about the fact they got them back early? And my my mother-in-law goes, "Well, they've been up since 7 I'm like, "No shit, they've been up since." Yeah, 7. that's what I figure. You've been up for hours. <laughs> I mean, it's no. ten a.m. I got I, sleep. Oh, dude, this is the one day I don't set an alarm. So I I'll, I could sleep till noon today. Well, yeah. And here's the other deal. I have coffee. This is from my wife's cap. Like she has one of those nice coffee makers that give yeah. you the two inches of foam and all that. Because my coffee maker, and I hope they're not watching because I did something dishonest. But I have a Keurig, the nice Keurig. My sister in laws chipped in to get it for me for Christmas, not this year, but last. I put the water on it, but it wasn't centered properly. It wasn't down on it. I burned up the damn motor, the the engine or whatever's inside a car. Oh, damn. <laughs> and I was like, no. That, so then I, I feel like that's not your fault. I feel like if that's all it took, though, you know what I mean? And it was like, only for five minutes, man. It's yeah. one of those that when you hit the button, it makes coffee within like four seconds. Yeah, so yeah. It, it heats up fast. I smelled the burning wire and I looked and the water wasn't sitting on it. So it burned up because it had no fluid. And I'm like, crap. So then my wife's like, just take it back to bed, bath and beyond. So I clean up this coffee maker, you know, get it perfect, take it into bed, bath and beyond. And they're like, sir, if you got it for Christmas, it's uh, we only insure it for 60 days. You're going to need to call the manufacturer. So I'm standing in a goddamn what? bed, bath and beyond with a coffee maker under my arms. And everybody looking at me like I'm some kind of, you know, trailer trash. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So then I walk out. Hey, I can't get this coffee machine to work. No, and I always my- I always see Keurig and immediately think trailer trash. Yeah. Well, no, I know. <laughs> no. All right. It just, it well, just- what he didn't tell you was he was dressed like Cousin Eddie at the time. Yeah. He's just like in a robe and a hat, and that's it. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm double wide. Okay, maybe I'm double wide with an above ground swimming pool and a nice porch. How about that? Is that work? So I'm sitting there and I walk out and I've got it on the front seat. Now I've gotten all the liquid out, but the woman I'm talking to, why does everybody at Keurig and I, and maybe this is other companies too, have foreigners working their, their phones. It's like the accent is unbelievable. And I'm pretty sure they're not American. I don't know what they are. And I'm like, it's like my, my, I don't want to, I don't, I, th- I think that there's a time and a place for outsourcing work, right? Obviously, I want to would want to keep things inside of the United States as much as possible. But one where you are interfacing with someone who is like verbal, right? Like, thank you. You, you got to be better maybe. than broken. I can't. Hackle. from China and Malaysia. Well, there you go. That explains the accents I heard. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, hold on. I'm lying over here and I'm trying to figure out an angle to get a free cure egg or at least get a, a nice percentage knocked off. And you're talking robotically to me, simple, broken English. I can't haggle with that. And that's the problem. I, I need, I need a good old fashioned American where I go, look, man, I don't know what went wrong. This thing burned up. My kid almost got burned a little sympathy. Can I get a, you know, I need a story to tell. And the woman goes, I'm going to need your number. It's on the bottom of your Keurig. If you will look on the bottom, it should be, and they give you too much information. It's a gray strip with an S forward slash in. And I'm like, okay. So I'm literally driving down the road. They say, don't use a phone on the road. Try picking up a God dang coffee maker while driving and, and reading off a serial number. And I'm like, Oh, that's this tiny. 
So I read her off the serial number. She's offering me 10% discount. That's not good enough. So I hung up with her. I got a reference number now that I wrote down. Then I call back. I get 20%. Then I work my way to 50% after two hours of my life on the phone. Don't give up. Get that 100%. And I finally got 100%, but I need the receipt. And I need to take a picture of the receipt and send it to them. And I'm like, oh, shit. So my sister-in-laws, they may have the receipt, <clears throat> but it's not this Christmas. It's a Christmas ago. So I'm like, all right, what do I do? So literally I call up, I go, look, I've now gotten to the bottom of it. I said, my sister-in-law got it brand new for this Christmas at an office party. She already has a Keurig. They gave it to me. And now that individual no longer works at their business. And she doesn't feel right calling to ask for a receipt for a gift that she got, you know, three months ago. And they bought into that damn story and they go, well, have a handwritten note with your name, your, your reference number that we gave you and the date, put it next to the Keurig, make sure the Keurig is positioned, put the letter in front of it. And I can send you guys this if we want to put it up on the podcast, but it had to be done a certain way. Take mm -hmm. a bottom of the picture, send it in 10 days. I should have a coffee maker until then I'm drinking fancy coffee. with. Can we all just say this sounds like a huge pain in the dick. It is. Right. So what am I doing? <laughs> this whole fucking it's story. Time to drink. Going, yeah. I'm like, what I'm drinking. the fuck is happening? My wife goes, You're drinking in the morning. I go, You bet your ass I am. I'm having some yeah, come on, a proud sponsor, legend yeah, come on bourbon whiskey right now. I don't know about you guys. I'm drinking during this podcast in the AM. <laughs> yeah. Drinking water. I right, so I don't know what's going on in your lives, but that's my Oh, life. I got so much I want to ask both you guys about. Yeah, Dude, I want to. No, I want to ask Evan about the filling in stuff. I want to ask Steve about selling shit. Oh. I mean, every I'm following you guys on social, so you're looking at two unemployed. Out of all three of us, <laughs> one of us has a job. That's true. Oh, if I got three jobs, bitches. <laughs> hey, <laughs> stop hoarding that. We need <laughs> you got enough. Have you, Evan? Have you gone to uh, fill out unemployment yet? Or you? Yeah, I sure did. God, is that not a bitch or what? That is a bitch. And you have to go do the class. I did the class. And you feel like you're in the class. There's always one person that you're like, all right, you, you got something bad happened to you like me. You're normal. And then the yeah, rest yeah. of the people, you're like, who are you? Whack job. There was a, there was a woman there. Who she, I, you're like, yeah, I know this is your third time here. Like, you know, like just the way she was like talking about it and asking questions. I'm like, you seem more in the know about this. Yeah, yeah, because it, it is the rules are crazy. Yeah, they're simple rules, but there's a lot of them. And if you don't follow them in order, they get pissy, and that's their excuse not to give you a check. And yeah, it, it is, it is, it's almost beneath you, but there's so much you got to do, and you got to look actively for three jobs a week, enter in that information. Uh, which today we have to do, you have to do it on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. get a check. Do, do you want to disclose how much they're giving you? Uh, it's not. Yeah a ton it's is i mean it, it's is it in a hundred is it in the hundred or 200 range uh, it's a little above that so are you getting 365 oh, oh that's God. what i'm getting Ball, yeah. hey oh <laughs> <laughs> that does not seem fair this man has two kids jeez so i'm getting 365 a week which is the max you can take unemployment for 14 weeks so the mm. check comes to five thousand and eleven dollars that does not seem like that does not seem fair no, that you and I will survive. Thank you. Yeah, a hundred percent. You can crawl into this country under under a dark sky, pop up somewhere, and get more money than we're getting. Yeah, you know, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and we've paid into this. Yeah. No, no offense, I've paid into it for like way more, years. way more. Yeah. So, but that was that was I the think max. You got to work your way into it, don't you? Don't you have to work like? two or three quarters of yeah, fiscal so you can't year just... in order to be eligible. Like there's, there's some guidelines. I mean, I, when I was on it during COVID, I was, it was baller. Oh, kiss I was my ass. Kiss my it. ass. I loved it. Evan, <laughs> you and I are going to classes and we're just getting a fraction. Oh, I didn't have to do money. any of that shit. Hey, I no. just literally sat at oh. home every Wednesday. I got a check for $900. $900? Yeah. Because it was effing COVID. Oh, this right. Son, this <laughs> son of a bitch. And I, and I say that barely knowing your mom. I apologize. But nice Brett, woman. Brett goes, I didn't do anything, man. The company handled everything. No, they did it all for three months for me. Dude, fire me, please. I mean, let me go. Oh, they I did also, let you go. It was the same I know. company. And I know. The I same company. And they didn't do shit for me. And, and I, I had two part-time gigs. Years. Dude, I was rolling. 
I was rolling. I was playing golf five days a week. God damn, dude. Oh, it was amazing. Speaking of golf, happy Masters week, boys. Yeah. yeah. And that's one reason. And of course, if you think this podcast didn't think of angles, I see your Masters. I should have mine on too, but I don't. You know why? Because I'm wearing it. Yeah, come on, shirt. I'm supporting this podcast. Evan has nothing on to support anything other than his lifestyle. I've got, yeah. I've, I've got it looks like he shops at Target. I do yeah. shop at Target. Thank you very much. Oh my dude. God. Tarjay. So uh we were gonna do this uh from a golf course, but then my my country club reminded me, well, Steve, your membership ends May 1st because you canceled it. And I'm like, I'm out of work. I had to cancel the membership. I mean, I don't have to, but my wife's like, we're not paying for that. So I'm like, all right, fine. So we were gonna do it live with a golf course behind us. I live on a golf course. We could have done it in the woods with a golf course behind us. We had Mick Middlemo lined up a caddy that played uh, in the PGA Tour for 14 years. He had to bail for personal reasons. And here we sit, half out of it, on a Sunday morning with no golf other than to talk about it. Nobody even did a golf background. I thought one of you might put Augusta up as your background for this. Now I got to flex out this new fucking house. As someone who, yeah, it's true. Brett, now's the time. Put a... Put a putting green in there. Look at this like, room. Not one of those. It's not wild. one of those lame office, like Look. just a long stretch putting. You gotta oh, hold get on. like. A Evan, did you pick up on it? He has the friends like uh uh thing that covers the doorway. What what do you call what do you call those things that you said sh shine back down? You remember when Joey and them built it and it covered the two doorways? Oh yeah yeah yeah. What do you call those things? I should uh, know where you put the TV in the yeah, book, yeah, yeah, nice yeah. little displays. It's not credenza. It's not IKEA a shelf. We'll call it a shelf or credenza. I like credenza too, but it covers your your closet. It doesn't work in that room. It's not staying in this room. Oh, oh. At some point, it'll go somewhere else. There's going to be a couch, so I can I can go sit back there on a couch and do this. Hey, nice, nice ceiling fan too. It looks brand new and dusted. I hope so. I better be. Damn it, dude! It's paying. It's been the move from hell, by the way. Yeah, it's been awful. The, we were like, oh, we're going to finish Monday night. We only got two loads of stuff to get. Um, so let's roll over there at 6.30. It took the day off of work. So we're just like kind of hanging around doing some stuff around here. We rolled back to the old house. Like, oh, okay. Right. We'll be done by 10 o'clock. Whatever. Not a big deal. 2.30 in the morning, I was driving over my last load of stuff. And I still had two more to go. And I had to be at work the next morning at 8.30. Oh. I was not very happy about this move. Oh, none of my moves have gone well. I remember one time I had when I had my first house. I'd lived in it for two years, built it, designed it, picked the flooring, the whole bit, and I did it with a girl. Uh, and the only reason I moved to Kennesaw is because she had uh, literally thirty-eight Ds, and they set up nice on a body that weighed. Her body, she was one hundred and fourteen hey, pounds. On the scale of yeah, come on, how would you yeah come on them? Them double diesels. I, I would. I would, those were a ten, and she was literally twenty three years old. That, so that was like a yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, come on. They came straight out. They hadn't even dropped yet. I was like, it's like it's like a kid's sack at ten, no droppage. And I was like, <laughs> all right, cool, man. And then I realized, okay, when she took our bills and she said her mom did this. She had all of her bills, and I caught her. She almost burned down our kitchen. She had them in a frying pan, and she was burning her bills, like her receipt. Instead of shredding them or just cutting them up or putting them in the trash and hoping the trash man doesn't steal her identity, she literally was burning them. And then there were about three or four little things. I'm shallow. She had a zit in her nether regions, and I popped it, and it hit my cheek and ingrown. Oh, oh my god! So there was oh. a couple, a couple little things, not her fault, that I was just too shallow for. Good and I'm Lord. like, so I had to end the relationship. Uh, so then I'm like, what am I doing in a house in Kennesaw in a cul-de-sac and winning yard of the month? So I got to get the hell out of here. But I didn't pack up anything. The mover says we will pack you. I didn't do anything. Those guys came in and milked me for almost three grand. And I wasn't making a ton of money back then. They were literally almost wrapping my silverware individually to stall. It was a stall tactic. Four person crew with brown paper from hell. They wrapped, they wrapped my toothbrush. They wrapped everything and moved it, Brett. And it took uh it took 14 hours. 14. I had movers for four hours. It was pretty awesome. I was like, you're taking that, you're taking that, you're taking that. And that was my favorite moving day. It was pretty expensive. But it didn't cheap. It didn't cheap. Move a girl back to Boca Raton when it doesn't work out. And her kid, bring it up in an 18 wheeler and send her back in an 18 wheeler and see what that cost you. That was my experience in 2004.
Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. I'm you should sure. send her a bill right now. Be like, I'm out of work. You owe me. Send her. <laughs> when, is, <laughs> when is it too late to collect on that? Because a friend of mine uh, last year, he bought a concert ticket for, a, for another friend of ours. And he was like, is it too late to ask for it? Because it was like 115 bucks, you know, a big concert, right? Uh, I was like, I think you, just, I think your money's just gone, man. Yeah, um, that's like picking always... up a bar tab or something. You know? Yeah, you just like, you know, I, you kind of you got to chalk that loss up right there. Like after, like if it was right there on the spot, and it's like, hey, I got your concert ticket. Will you get my drinks? Yeah, or something like. There's your trader, pay for parking or whatever. But you're not coming. Like okay, next weekend, uh, my buddy and his wife they bought me and my wife tickets to go see Stavros Halkius. Super. Oh, fun, by the way, shit, that sounds so I'm awesome. Going, yeah, I'm going to the the show in Buckhead. How do we get and, that guy on the show, man? Oh, oh I love Stavros. Stavros is great. Stavros is like one of my favorite comedians right now. I've been. Have you Bert. not seen this yeah. guy? He is so funny. Big like, fat I, Greek guy. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I never even, uh, I never interviewed him or anything. He never came. You know. Yeah, he's 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 new. He's, he's, he's pretty, pretty. Yeah, he's pretty new to the scene. He was okay. on. He, well, uh, he was on Cumtown. Cumtown, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we we interviewed some people that were doing just the larger venues, but obviously it's an easy win when you're connected with a comedy club. But this dude's too yeah. good for that. He's going big time. Yeah, kind of I mean, like quickly too. Like he he did this podcast that was pretty big, and then he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna leave the podcast, focus on stand up." And it, yeah, he did like just this YouTube thing, and it killed and that, murdered. Like, really, yeah, and that was it. It's pretty cool. All right, man. Yeah, he's kind of running his own thing, but. Like, so I've asked them multiple times, like, how much do I owe you guys for the tickets? And they're like, oh, you know, I think like one time they're like, tickets were like 50 or whatever. Then they're like, oh, don't worry about it. We got the tickets. And now I'm like, so do I owe them for tickets? Like you were saying, Evan, like, <laughs> like do I, because <laughs> I'm paying yeah. for two in this situation. Two like, is, yeah. I mean, look, if you don't, you got to buy drinks all night, obviously. It's the least you can do. I, uh, I, I'm not a Bogarty guy, but I've got one friend named Todd and I abused him. Uh, the first concert at Mercedes Benz stadium, which was the country guy. Uh, the one Garth that, Brooks. Yeah. Garth. And we had there. And no, we had, it was, was it? Was no, it, it was Garth? Garth. You're right. It was Garth. So we went to Garth Brooks and we, you know, we drove to his house and he had a limo driver and it turns out he uses the limo driver. I have a guy named Wally Cuckoo and he's fabulous and he's from the islands and he's great. And I've had him as a limo driver since 97. My buddy hooked me up with him and then I've given him to George Stein. All his whole law firm uses him. He's just fabulous. He's the black suit kind of guy. He comes in, he makes sure you're safe. He super serves, he opens doors and he's a great conversationalist. So I told Todd about him. So I get there and it's my good buddy, Wally Cuckoo. Well, Wally is good. He's not always cheap. He can work a deal with you. So I take a limo ride down. I also get two tickets to Garth and I never compensated him. And it kind of hit me and I'm like, God. And then it's like too late to, to mention it. And you're like, I guess if it was a problem, he would have said something. But that's the only time in my life I think I ever like bogarted on somebody. I don't know what Garth Brooks cost, but I got two tickets and I hmm. never paid him. So mm. he could technically call me right now and ask for that money. And it's been two and a half years. Dude, I would tell the guy to stick it. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm not, not going to deny that. Like, I'm not going to pay for that. Like my buddy, my buddy next week, the wife was going, you know, okay, we'll take him out somewhere really nice for dinner yeah. for the show. And that's how mm. we'll get the tickets. But come to find out, you know, that's, I'm working at SB that day. So uh, I'm literally going from the work to meet people at the show. So I'm like, I won't be there at dinner if y'all are going. Well, talk to us about working real quick because Evan and I uh, aren't. Uh, I'm a cat. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Dude, okay. I'm yeah. working like every day right now. I might be going to work right after this, and I worked yesterday on a Saturday. So currently, I uh, got the Monday through Friday, the 9 to 5, right? Got it. And then got I got uh, WSB on Saturdays. What do you do for SB? I run their uh, board and – kind of hope that that there's a live show that i can produce something but there was not yesterday it was pretty okay pretty normal uh, still respectable and, that's cool wsb fantastic company and now i'm going to work for the braves radio network on sundays and that's 680 the fan mm -hmm. and sb's cool with that now nah, i sb i, I quit <laughs> next saturday's my last saturday 
Nice. I'm done. I was like, I'm so not they're, working. No, so no, they're not cool with it. No, they were they were cool with it. Is this? this I didn't want to work. I, yeah, I yeah, didn't this, want to. <laughs> hey, y'all, hey, hey, program director, I need you to listen to this podcast. I'm going to. I'm going to resign. Oh my God. That would have been so good. Oh, that's funny. Oh, I really wish we would have thought of that. And I would have just sent them the podcast and then just not shown up. And like, that's this is right. my last date. I've got Oh, next time I quit a job, I'm doing it on here and sending it to somebody. We're going to do be it great. right off the top. I've got so many jobs that I just quit on podcasts. <laughs> no, I just didn't want to work every Saturday and every Sunday for the next six months. Like that just didn't. Sounds, no, that sounds like appealing. Nightmare. No, that's tough on the personal life. You are at a young age. I do remember when I started my career, and it. But how I'm not that you? young, dude. I I'm thirty. I'm about to be thirty four here this month. All right. How old are you, Evan? Uh, I mean, I'm twenty nine. Thirty thirty in July. Okay. When I was Evan's age, it was like, what can I do? Um, you know, mm. especially like I started radio in, at twenty seven. And uh, there was no no in my game. It was all yeah. Oh yeah. But but you're single. You know, you live in an uh, apartment with one one other dude, or you know, and you're just like, "What the hell, man!" And you're getting to drive the the promotional vehicle, and that's getting you laid because you pull that in front of your house or your apartment, and people ask questions. You're just loving your life, uh, and you know, you don't say no to anything. But I will agree, Brett, you are at the age where, yeah, it's time to say no to a few things. Oh Mid-30s, no, I should have said that. Yeah. yeah, I should have said that. Even on the the new the brave stuff, they're like, "Well, you know, you can stay on and do this stuff through the holidays." I was like, "Yeah, I'll tell you this. Five years ago, I'd have said yes to everything. I've had, definitely hit that point. I will tell you no." Well, you're married. You don't have kids, but you're married. Evan's in a little, but Evan, you're close too. Um, so one thing about this podcast, I think there's a ton of talent um you know i i have been on 88.5 <clears throat> college radio at georgia state for three years then i did 96 rock for i think 12 or 11 years and then i did country for a year mornings with rhubarb in dallas and then 14 year run on rock on cumulus and now unemployed um and then brett i met you you were working for uh 106.7 um and you were producing and Evan, I know that you are on 99X, and uh, and then you also did Afternoons on Rock 100.5, mm-hmm. or I did. So this is a very talented show that is, uh, you know, that is that has worked and been paid to be on your radio. Uh, and now we're kind of finding our way again. It'll be interesting to see where we all are in about six months. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And uh, from. For me, I'm just like, I'm open to a lot of stuff because like, obviously, Steve, you've been in a while. For me, I'm like, I'm still pretty fresh. I don't know, like, if radio's up next for me or like last night, I got to do something really, really cool. That's what uh, I was about to ask you. Are we allowed uh, to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, uh, well, take the floor. And then after we hear this story, we're going to take a moment for our sponsors that do pay our bills. And this might be the only money I have coming in. So we got to hit it. We got to yeah. hit it. Got to hit it. Um, yeah, but uh, I have, it's a proud 99X tradition, I guess, because the, the guys who do this are all like 99X guys or former 99X guys. Uh, I got to uh, fill in for the Gladiators last night, be the, the announced guy. That's cool. I've, I've done the uh, I've done the um, halftime stuff a few times, dropping. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Play, playing a game out there, but I uh, never got to announce. So I got to build in for Steve Craig. And I got to tell you, when I saw that, I was uh, I was very happy that you got that position and it's not easy. Tell us what it was like. It was really cool. So I, I, I'm a, uh, you know, like the, there, have you guys done any of that thing like that? Steve, you used yeah. to do soccer, right? No, nope, I no. did. I was the voice of the uh, silverbacks for seven years that involved some play by play. Yeah. Especially yeah. Especially when they were within 30 yards of scoring or mm-hmm. the other team was 30 yards from scoring. You know, you might do a little uh, pass. To Jordy Broder passes to blah, 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 blah. yeah, but uh, but it's fun when they score. Then you give the score, you give the time, and you read sponsors throughout. Yeah, when when, when the ball or the puck is at a good point to where you're not disturbing the fan base. Yeah, that, I mean that was pretty much it, right? Like uh, you're you're doing sponsors, you're doing like if some big player penalty happens, you're doing that, you know, and the the girl next to you hands you a sheet with like a number and the penalty and stuff, and and that staff names? was. What? Did you botch any names? Oh, uh, I don't think so. It's hockey. It's like I'm thinking they're all Russian or. There something. were definitely like four or five where I was like, Bleh. but I'm Steve Craig being the the pro he is actually had written out like this is pronounced like Arabia. It's not Karabia. It's Karabia. You know stuff like that. So 
it, it was written out phonetically, so I didn't have to worry about that. I it's did. Not I did. I bungled Ontario and said Ontario. Um, mm. <laughs> which, yeah, not a, don't laugh. That's not a big deal. Who cares? <laughs> I wouldn't call. It, hey, in the audience, I wouldn't have called it. I'd be like, Yeah, oh, right. Ont- Ontario. Whatever. Just, he said it. The one thing you got to nail though, and I'm, I think I did nail this, and I'm proud of myself for it, is the starting lineup. Yeah. I was like. The Chicago Bulls 90s announcer. Oh, yeah. my God. Can I you mean, give it to us right now? Well, right my voice is shot from doing it, but I hear Let me just, do it. Here, see if you can get, hit a couple. I'll just do like a little bit. Just All right. And starting in goal, number 23, Mike Palaka. You cut out. You cut out because you hit it so I hard. So hard. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Also, uh, he's not. It was a. Uh, he's. Is he the goalie? I don't think he's the goalie, but it was fun though. I was trying to channel that, like, <laughs> you know, the NBA Jam or NFL Blitz energy. You know, no, that's fun. I remember when I would introduce uh, the visiting team, I would just do it calmly, like, uh, goalie number zero, Frank Smith. You know, and it, yeah, I would yeah, go yeah. You do it as matter of fact as possible. Yeah, and then I'm like number twenty two, uh, defender. You know, Billy yeah. Madison. You know, you know obviously. Yeah. So. But then when you get to your team, yeah, you take it. Oh, up you, you put some stank on that all day. Yeah, you put something on it and you get the crowd fired up. That that's a blast. I'm glad you got to do it. That was probably one of the coolest things I've done in radio. I also got to do a, a Jimmy Connor before he retired. He came in in ninety five and did something at the Omni, a t- indoor tennis match. And I got to do that and read mm. sponsors. But uh, you know, Craig put a lot of trust in you. I think that was really cool, and I'm I'm proud of you that you got to do it. That's a feather in your cap, son. Absolutely, it was a it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope to hope to be back potentially next season because their old their old backup is now the guy who does the Braves. He's the guy who got the Braves job. Oh, did not know that. Well, here's no. the good news: if Craig gets busy doing whatever yeah. he decides to do, it could be your gig. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, Very possible, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And my brother, uh, he does like, he works for them as well. So it was fun doing stuff with, with the old brother as well. So, oh, your yeah. brother. What does he yeah, do? He works for the glads. What does he do? Exactly. He does. He's like their digital media guy. Okay. Concessions. So, he, um, I can say he's, he's <laughs> hot so dog. Hot hot dog. who wants a hot dog. And, and you're like number 22. Hold on one second. What's up, bro? Hey, up I'll here, a hot dog. Up here, I definitely could be a hot dog guy or ice cold, ice cold, ice cold, Bud Light. Oh, those Bud Light. You know what's funny too? The ones behind home plate are the best. It's almost like there must be. Oh, they, you can hear like, them on TV. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. Only the There's good a few ones. Stadiums they pop. Like Turner yeah. Field, there was a guy that was on third base side down below. He was killer. Yeah. Ice cold. Ice cold. Okay, I'm gonna wake the wife up. She's gonna. Yeah. Yeah, well, she you're gonna wake her up and not have an ice cold Bud Light for her. That's a problem. And, and here's the thing: I think what they do is they start you out in left field or right field, and they work they work you up to the big leagues. There's yeah. got to be some hierarchy. There. I think you got to start like upper deck. Yeah. yeah. Then, <laughs> no, listen, rookie, you're gonna see some stuff. You start then, you you start where like you can't even see the field. You know? yeah. <laughs> like but then you know, when you get to that when you get to move on the third baseline, oh baby, that is. And I'm convinced that they have talent scouts out on the streets looking for a homeless guy that's got the best angle. And, it really, it does. And then they seem grab like, you and be like, "How would you like to be a vendor?" And you know, and they you're going to be a star, kid. You're going to be a star. I like, <laughs> I like your verbal game. Don't cuss because there's kids, but I like your verbal game. Dude, what really- we should do is hit up the Braves and see if they'll let all three of us do oh, beer my- vending for one game. I and do then, it. And then we'll have to see who gets the most tips. Yes. And and whoever gets the most tips gets to keep everyone's tips. Damn, that's cool. Oh, no, 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 not every. Hold on. We got, I got to get something. How about you get 20% of each? Okay. Other? So you get 50, okay, 25% of the other people's tips. Fair. Are we all that's fair. slinging the same thing? Because I don't want to be cotton candy guy. I don't want to be stuck with cotton candy. No. No, I want, no, beer. We, I want to be beer, want peanuts, beer. hot dogs. Yeah, and I don't, yeah, I I don't want to be the guy that has leftover circus stuff from Barney's and Bailey's or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is this? Who wants a Twizzler? I'm getting killed over here. No, I would do it. I would do it. It'd be a blast. I mean, that, that could be that could be fun. <laughs> That's uh, really funny. Hopefully you're enjoying this show on a master's week. We are all local boys. We all love watching golf uh, and we will be watching the masters with you. I promise we'll get a little bit of masters talk in here. Uh, but right now it's time to mention our proud sponsors, joebees.com. 
Uh, B pollen. I'm on two capsules right now. Took them literally 30 minutes ago. That's why I have the energy I have. It is my vitamin from nature, all natural. He also has a, uh, a little warranty on it, man. If you're not satisfied, if you don't feel it, you can return it and, uh, you'll be fully refunded. That's a man that believes in what he's doing. Joe B's. Dot com J O E B E E S dot com David Markwell. Uh man, Markwell's got a cool little following. He's called something cat. Uh I saw him on uh on uh Instagram. Do you know what it is? It's some koi koi cat, I think is what he goes by. It's a funky little thing. I would have thought he'd put his name in it. But look up David Markwell. It's spelled like it sounds. He has David uh has a uh, ridgeline counseling so he cancels out of marietta and blue ridge and you can go to markwelltherapy.com there's a lot of people as we keep seeing and i'm not going to bring up you know the obvious uh school situation in nashville but i kind of did but there's a lot of people out there honest to god and, and you know for a second being serious that are going through something if you have a loved one or a friend or anybody let them talk to somebody let a professional diagnose and see something possibly coming or, you know, just uh, make somebody's life better. Let them work through whatever they're dealing with. Uh, Circle285.com. I just uh, redid mine. I contacted Circle285.com just like you can. And I said, this is what I need for my family. Bundle my car and my home. And they give you the best possible price. They give you free quotes. Legends. Yeah, come on, bourbon whiskey. Yeah, it's 10 a.m. and I'm drinking whatever hmm. what I do for the show. Uh, Roll I was, tad. I was actually at Legends uh, last night. Uh, they do the Yet yeah, Come On uh, concert series, and they had a dude that was fabulous, man. His name's Cody Matthews, and uh, he's just a really good musician. Tried out for American Idol, made it to the last cut, and didn't get the yellow certificate. But, man, I heard him sing last night. You talk about a talented dude, and we do that once a month. So just go to legends.com to uh, to see when the uh, Yet yeah, Come On uh, concert series is, and I'm always there. And lastly, Oxygen Financial, that's our main man, Ted Jenkins. When we are in studio, that's where we are in Alpharetta. Um, I just want to say, Masters, do we have a favorite? I mean, who all is playing? Is Tiger playing? Well, but real quick, before we get out of sponsors. Um, I oh, know, what do you got? Well, I, I did want to say that uh, I wanted to show sponsor, potential sponsors that we had what it takes to be the podcast that they should sponsor. So I had AI generate. Uh, some new sponsors for us just to show that we got what it takes. So Steve, sure. I emailed those to you. If you'd like to to do that. All uh, right. Let me see here. How about all the work right is now? done. The AI generated the copy for you. So all you got to do is read the I'm AI looking for your email. I uh, see Brett show one sixty two. When did you send it to me? Uh, I'm just you up. very recently. I can send it again. If need be send it again. Uh, I see my zoom. I've updated my zoom. If anybody cared. Uh, you less uh, big day for yeah, Steve. I'm not buying it. David Foster, Peyton Barrow, yeah. Brett Barney, show 162. You're listening. Does he not know that he can search? Evan? I can, but I, I just thought it would be on top. So I'm having That's fun. Fine. Evan, right? I'm you looking, got it, right? Uh, There's just two new sponsors. I'm Again, looking at Evan Brando, Brenda Nicio. Oh my god, this is something from 61322. What the hell? Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> All right, dude, I'm looking, baby. Here. Try to check now. I'm checking. It's Brett. If you ever, I'm not going to have you give me Brett. If you ever lash out at me again, like, does he not know he can check, but he said he just sent it to me, Brett. So I'm just, Brett's got it. it. Brett's on. Yeah. It. I got it right here in front of me. Well, hold on. Well, guess what? You may read it. If I don't get, aha, there she is. There we go. All right. All right. So there's no talking. way he's going to, this is way too much reading for him. No, it's, uh, he'll do great. Cause again, it's all, he doesn't need to do any sort of like any else. It's just, just read. Up your shit, so, our two oh. new sponsor, our two new AI generated sponsors, Steve. Whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Huh. Come on, Paul. Oh, what the hell, man? I did get asked at work to write some questions for an interview and try to go to Chat GPT to do it for me. <laughs> All right. Hey, folks, it's Southside Steve here, and I've got a special message from our sponsor, Doughy Delights Donuts. <laughs> Doughy Delights, I like that. Yeah. Now, I have to be honest with you, I've tried doughy delicious donuts, and they're not exactly my cup of tea. But hey, taste is subjective, right? And I know some of you out there might enjoy them. I mean, you've been to, in the business for a while, right? They've been, hold on, hold on, your coffee's small. 
I mean, they've been in the business for a while. So someone must be buying these things. Maybe they just have different palate than me. Who knows? Anyway, if you're looking for some subpar donuts that may or may not be your thing, why not try or give doughy donuts a shot? Uh, I can guarantee you, you'll love them. Hey, you out there, you might find something you like. Give it a shot. And even if you don't, you'll be supporting local business. And it's been trying to make it in the donut game for a while. Who knows? You might even prove, they might even improve over time. So head on down to Doughy Donuts and see what you think. Thanks for listening, folks. And here's to subpar donuts. <laughs> you, want to do this? you want to do the next one? God bless America. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Southside Steve here. I want to take a minute to talk to you about a company that thinks they're pretty cool. It's called One Shirt Guy. And as the name suggests, it's run by just one guy who's selling just one shirt. Now, you might be thinking, one shirt, that's it. But trust me, this shirt is pretty damn awesome. It's made of high-quality materials. It's comfortable to wear. It looks great. Plus, it's a conversation starter. People are always asking me about it when I wear it. But here's the thing. <laughs> the guy could really use our support. He's doing everything himself, designing the shirt, printing it, packing <laughs> it up, and shipping it out. And he's doing great job, man. But it's tough to get the word out there when you're just one person. So here's what I'm asking. Check out the One Shirt Guys website. Take a look at the shirt and see if it's what you want to see on you. Go ahead. <laughs> buy one. If only one shirt so you won't break the bank. That's it. It's a small purchase, but you're supporting a small business owner who's working hard to make something great. And who knows? Maybe someday this guy will be selling more than more than just one shirt. You know, he could have two shirts. Who knows? But for one, let's show him some love and help keep him doing what he's doing. Thanks for listening, folks. Go There's out one, there and buy one shirt. There's one shirt guy, yakamon.com. Yes, asshole. <laughs> and by the way, if the coffee was bigger, I could have read it better. I yeah. was say, I'll, know, I'll know for next look time. Look at this. Good God. Oh, my good Lord. That's small. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All right, next time. I'll do Wait bigger. Here. But Steve, I... Such a jerk. I love it. It's funny. I, I, I feel like I, I need to do the donut copy uh, again. And Brett, you edit it. I'm going to make you work. Cause I can, yeah. cause he's I already got too many jobs. You guys take it. <laughs> All I right. make it bigger, but I'll make it bigger for next time. But uh, that was donut. fabulous. I, I hope these two sponsors, I love one shirt guy. And I love the, uh, the doughy donuts, uh, doughy delight donuts. They're that subpar are, donuts. They're subpar. <laughs> I know that one wasn't meant for me, but the one shirt was. So, yeah, if you go to yeah, no, AI just look, I just told AI to generate sponsors for this show. That's all I said. Well, that's pretty funny. Uh, I will tell you that I will take on those two sponsors. Um, we might <laughs> next show, we will now have doughy delight donuts, subpar donuts. We're going to throw that out there. And then one shirt guy forever will be a sponsor, <laughs> otherwise known as yetcomeon.com. Yeah, and since you said it, <laughs> I'm starving. I ain't going to kid you. I've cut everything. I'm on unemployment. Buy a shirt or a hat from yetcomeon.com. And you know what I had to do? I had to change my site for shipping. Do you know how much shipping is right now? I was losing all my profits literally to shipping. Wow. It's, ten, it's $10 to ship anything. I've got a kid. At my what? Yeah, $10. I think there's like. What was it ship fix or ship stitch? I don't, I don't know. I just hear ads on shows and I'm like, is I'm that too much light on me? My son's outside the window knocking. They're outside. Is he mooning you? Is mooning yeah. still a thing? I asked somebody this the other day, like, do people still moon? Not, not like they used to. Um, Dude, I'm mooning you. Like, I remember like driving down Roswell Road and my cousin like mooning out the window. Yeah, mooning used to be big. Mooning Bigger. was big in the 90s, dude. Yeah, we got to bring mooning back. I will tell you, I was at Thanksgiving, and my if you know anything about me, the family I married into is extremely proper. Like, they know where to put all the forks and knives. And Do they moon? You, Your life, your family life is like a Rodney Dangerfield movie. It is very funny in that way. <laughs> oh, I don't get new respect. Oh, uh, no <laughs> respect. <laughs> uh, it's just like uh, I was watching that clip, and it was talking about, caddyshack 
And I was talking about how Rodney Dangerfield's the bully in the movie. And Judge Schme- Judge Smales Sm- Smales 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 Smales. Yeah, whatever. He's the he's actually the right person because he worked so hard, got a law degree, became a judge. Now all he wants to do is just hang out at his country club. You got Rodney Dangerfield ruining the country club. He's experience. making fun of everybody's hats. Yeah, yeah, and like, like S- Judge Smales. He's just the right person. Like he's the guy in the movie Caddy. So Steve, we're talking about Caddyshack. Yeah. I love it. Know it well. And how Judge Smales is actually, you know, the victim in the entire movie. You're saying he, he should be the hero of the movie because he's trying to. Cut no, the everybody else just bullies him. He does. He lives at a country club. He wants the country club he to works, have a certain standard. And he worked hard to become a judge. He went to law school, did all these things. And now you got Rodney Dangerfield coming. You know, he buys this nice boat, and then Rodney Dangerfield drops his anchor through it. I mean, yeah. if you think and- about it, it's pretty spot on. And then, like, he wants to like bring this caddy under this his wing, and then his caddy bangs his niece in his bed. Yeah, that was that was bad. That was not good. And then and then she ends up hooking up with uh, Chevy. Yeah, and, I mean, well, everybody's whore. having sex am with I her. Getting- Am I am I getting on your side on this? Yeah, dude, he's totally right. And how about the candy bar? I mean, thanks to his his uh, hiccup. Oh, oh yeah. God. They drain an entire pool and scrub it. You know how much that costs the country club to drain that pool? Yeah, first off, nobody scrub? does that. Like that's yeah. like you just throw a shitload of bleach in it. That's what you do. You're like more chlorine over here. Yeah. And, you know, and then of course they finally figure out that it's uh it's a candy bar and they're like, Oh, darn we stupid. You're right, it's a travesty, the whole and he and he literally won the explosion that puts the ball in the cup shouldn't count. I mean, it's an explosion. No, Jeff, I'm with you. This is this is the karate kid thing where it's like, no, 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 no. Johnny was the bad or you know, uh Daniel was the bad guy because he he won with an illegal head kick. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like I'll go back to it. Revenge of the nerds, dude. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Dude, dude well, the we're, nerds. We're, we're living that in life right now. I mean, it is totally living that. I don't know if I want to get too deep into that one because we'll everybody... let it go. Let the, you know, Brett yeah. Bre- 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 looks like the, <laughs> but, the but Caddy, the, yeah, the that guy. one I will go off on. Uh, yeah. Caddy Shack, though, because you know, Masters Week, by the way, definitely need to share with y'all. I have a future bet, <laughs> ride right. with me here. Okay. okay. <laughs> Each of these people just to win the Masters, I'm making some coin. John Rom, Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, Tony Finau, and Scotty Scheffler. Now, my best okay. payout, we're looking at Tony Finau, one, Scotty Scheffler, two, Justin Thomas, three. So All if right. I can get any All of right. those, here, then here, you're rocking. Here's what I'm wondering as someone who watches golf but only like the big events but i, I don't really follow they're called course. majors Ma- thank you majors sure um well, well done what, what only, do i need to know going into this, what do i need four. to know going into this week who are our key players what storylines do i need to know you know uh well first off uh you need to know that the tickets are terribly expensive and you have that to i got that, is, oh, that i assumed yeah that, that's pretty i'm i'm just looking. know that augusta the ground is way steeper in real life than it looks on TV. Like on TV, it'll look like this, like yeah. a hill. In yeah. real life, it's like, no like this. It's, I mean, that is one of the steepest courses I've ever walked. I've only hey, been hey, there once. Real quick, it's 11 11 right now, and we are doing this on a Sunday morning. Uh, you know, I hope you guys both get a job. That's my wish. Everybody, wish. oh, no, you said it won't come true now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm good. I got mine. Did. did you wish you wish for something, Evan? Did you get it? I did. Yeah. I wish Brett would. I, I wish Brett would stop hoarding all the jobs. <laughs> God, I know, dude. You got all the jobs. Hey, I'll tell you this. I do have. I've been craving lately, and Evan will totally understand this. I've been craving bratwurst. Oh yeah. So I bought a bunch of bratwurst yesterday, and oh, I'm really? about. I'm gonna throw down hard on the grill today. Right. You're both welcome. To come over and come sniff over. my bratwurst. I have to talk to my wife because we're always looking for a free meal. <laughs> You're gonna drive an hour to eat some brats, dude. <laughs> what the hell? It's only gas, man. Whatever. <laughs> I've got I've got the BP card. I get perks. I get like five free cents off a dollar. I mean, I you know I, I'm I'm working all my angles. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, what the hell? It's so funny because I can tell the neighborhood worries about me. So everybody, we had dinner at a neighbor's house last night. Everybody's like, hey, we'll have you over. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. I ain't saying oh. Dude, I, I don't know if Evan gets this as much as I, I do or not, but like all the people that's like, what's going on with Southside? What's going on? Like, really? All the time. What's going on with Southside? What's going on with Southside? Well, By the way, a Evan, while. So well, how, much- how come the owners of these companies, I mean, there's two companies. I talked to one uh, and it wasn't the right, it would have been the right fit if they were willing to put two people on the air. So I won't call out companies, but um, yeah, it, yeah, one had a lot of duties and some of the experience I have and some of it I don't. And it's like, but it puts me at the radio station eight, nine hours. And I'm just not that guy. I'm a guy that does a show and I will promote you. I will bring in endorsements. I'm great on a mic, but I want to sign up for, you know, I'll be out Friday night from eight to 10, or I'll be there Saturday morning for a charity run, or I'll be in your hometown for this but I want to sign up for that. I don't want to know that I'm being assigned to go eight places a week, you know, not with two kids and not, mm-hmm. a, not you know, I, I just, I want to be in a studio making great radio. I don't mind playing music if I have to, but I would rather just do a talk show, but you know, you, you, you see what you need to do. And then the other job was perfect. They wanted me and I wanted to be a part of it. It just wasn't enough. Yeah. It was, it was a 2006, 2007 starting salary for me. And I just, couldn't with the obligations of time you know if they if they could have brought it up some i would have made do i'm not i'm not I, i'm not a guy that's like i have to be paid x yeah but i can't be paid why yeah Jeez, come on so yeah. that's the situation i'm in and uh you know i don't know i don't know about you you are currently on air on 99x correct well i i'm employed by the company still uh, with the reboot uh my show is off the air right now okay uh, but enough. I have not lost my job with Cumulus. Okay. So, okay. So I I think there's I don't think it's too far to say that there's maybe some plans for me. I don't know exactly what those are yet, but um, but I'm I, I still have to do the employee training once in a while, you know. Well, no, that's cool. Hey, man, you know what? And they're they're figuring it out. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not I'm not, I'm not putting any pressure on them to. They, they relaunch something and I bet, I bet everything's changing on a dime. And as every, anybody that follows uh, the news at all or social media, you realize yeah. that a- Axel who did afternoons has just stepped down and has not announced what he's going to do next. So. Yeah. And uh, they brought uh, Will Pendarvis or Pendarvis, Pendarvis. Yeah. That, that fella, he's, he's back in the, the mix. So, okay, uh, you know, they, they've been, I mean, it's been cool, cool to see as someone who, uh, you know, I wasn't really here during the 90 X, 99 X heyday, but have like, heard a lot about it and mythology, you know, the mythology of it. I had and went and found all the best of like morning 99 or uh, went and found all the best of the morning X CDs. Like when I was studying to be a radio person, when I like first started interning with you guys, well, if you like, want to hear real humor, listen to the regular guys. Uh, right, oh, sorry. Right, right, <laughs> on, on 96 rock. Of course. Of course. And, that, and that's why I'm not there. It literally, uh, you know, whatever you, you went to war with those guys. And yeah, uh, I was on 96 Rock the whole time during that heyday. And to me, they had the music, to, but we had the personalities. Yeah. Evan is so 99X and not 96 Rock, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like as a person, no offense. Like, I, I grew up with both of them. I'm probably a little more 96 Rock. Yeah. Evan is definitely 99X. Like, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. You knew the guys that okay. listen to what? Like, my brother's 99X. Mm. Right. I'm 96 Rock. No, I'm a weirdo. I, I get it. No, you're not weird. It's just it's just where your head's at. It's when you grew up, dude. Uh, yeah. Make no mistake about it, you know run run your course. Um, but we'll we'll see. I mean, you know, one thing that I do want you to do is check out the Masters a little bit. If yeah, you get time, Evan. I know uh, you know Brett and I'll be all over it. I can't help but always cheer for Tiger Woods because I love him. Oh, you got to got to. Yeah. And and then you know since watching um, the the what was it called again the swing what what was that golf uh full swing full swing yeah thank you um i want to be now dude i like him and i like i like rory mcelroy better now that i saw this you know saw that uh and then justin thomas he's always out there uh isn't our big boy coming back uh who hit the ball further than anybody in golf uh drinker Party, john daly call it yeah in daily in so this i thought I don't know if Daly will be there, but everybody always knows he's in Augusta because he sits at the Hooters. So, Evan, here's a fun fact. If you ever go to the Masters, John Daly parks an RV at the Hooters 
Straight down the road and just signs autographs like you can hang out and eat chicken wings with them. He uh, doesn't care. Cool. That yeah. dude was a judge uh, when I was hosting the uh, internationals for Hooters bikini contest, and I always would hang out with the judges and have drinks like in a little bar area they'd set up for us. And dude, I hung out with that guy for about an hour, and he's just cool as hell. And I was watching him drink. I brought him a second thing, six pack of beer. He drank during a an hour and a half, uh, you know, contest kind of bikini contest that we were doing for sponsors he drank 12 beers i was like that's awesome that, that's not easy man and i can he just <laughs> drinks it and knocks Brent, it the, the i'm like he, god damn. we got to do the the wade boggs challenge but says the john oh Daly my god <laughs> uh, was it not like 54 beers uh here hang like, on i'm gonna look it up like, like the wade Boggs challenge unbelievable it's like it's like four hours you have to drink like 50 beers so I, I the drinking equivalent of an Iron Man competition. Those who undertake the Wade Boggs Challenge attempt to drink two cases of beer uh, and eat a bucket of fried chicken in a 24-hour period. Okay, I'd rather uh, do that than your 24-12. I think I could do this one. No, the best one's that Waffle House Challenge. I love it. Oh, oh, no, the fancy you, You've got 24 hours, uh, and for every waffle you eat, it knocks off an hour. I love that challenge. I don't know how I would survive it. But I love it. That's the I, best. I would just be like, just add like three waffles on my bill. I'll pay for them. I'm not going to eat them, but I'll show my buddies. Be like, Check it out. Yeah, I ate 15 waffles. <laughs> I mean, nobody should spend over 12 hours. You, you should be able to eat, you know, 20, 24 waffles in 12 hours. If Being in a waffle house that long will change your brain chemistry. It just will. Oh my God. You would literally, if you were in there 12 hours, you would go through at least 18, if not 19 table changes around you mm -hmm. and the conversations you will have to hear. Oh yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. See the oh, difference I is if it were me and I wasn't the loser, I'd park in the parking lot and be on the app, like on the jukebox. And I would just be playing the same song over and over. It would just be like, Doom, 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 doom. She's a brick house. Like I would, I would have that just going. I would pay to have that going for twenty four hours. No, no. Even I, I would go with "Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. I would have to pump myself dun, dun, over and over and over. That, yeah, but Brick House is way worse. It is, but I think what you get to do is, I think you get to pick the song you want to hear. You're right. You only get one song. Yeah, to hear over and over again, or. If there was a TV, you could get one show. I could find a Friends episode I could watch over and over and over again. I've never been to a Waffle House with a TV. I know. It had to be on your phone. Your friends would have to allow that. I got one episode of a TV show. Hmm. What? So you pick one episode of a TV show or... Oh, I know exactly what episode of TV I pick. This is the greatest TV. I don't think I've ever talked about this on the show, but I highly recommend this. And don't spoil it for yourself. Um, there's a talk show called The Chris Gethard Show, which was a live talk show a few years back. Uh, and they did an episode where they had a dumpster, right? Uh, it was him and it was uh, Paul Shear and Jason Manzoukas, who are like two other comedians. And the episode was people just calling in and guessing what is in the dumpster. And that is it for 45 minutes. Wow. It is amazing. It is the best episode of television I've ever seen. Wow. It's crazy. I've it never is. seen it. So the people guess and they have to go and find it. Yeah, they just, so they just have this dumpster behind them. It's like a talk show set. And mm -hmm. all they do is guess what is in the dumpster. And then, huh. then they'll say yes or no. So they stock the dumpster themselves. They put something in this dumpster. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. And you would not believe it pays off, but it, it does. It doesn't sound like it would. It sounds It does. It, I couldn't believe it when I, I was like, there's no friggin' way. Oh, my God. It was cool. It was cool. Um, dude I, I i don't even know like i might have to we might have to revisit this topic because i was seeing white caps on sopranos as like my one and only episode which one's mm -hmm. that that's one where paulie and christopher get stuck oh in that's the, the best one. Oh, that one's awesome yeah and it's yeah. like uh what what does tony say that he one's was good. like he was in the interior defense and he's like what did he tell you he's like he said he was an interior decorator his apartment looked like shit <laughs> <laughs> his apartment looked like shit yeah <laughs> like uh so that's that's probably my favorite one but that is, that's like the best but like but like show. i mean like you got to think it's got to be an hour-long show you well, only get one episode oh, no i was yeah. going 30 i was going 30 minutes i'm going oh, you're TV. ballsy 30 minutes tv and you can think of the last episode whether it's mash or friends or uh or seinfeld 
you know, something that really stuck out or, you know, I don't know. Um, mm, did you, you guys ever watch TV community? Show? I know. Oh, that's a good one. Chevy Chase, Joe McHale. I've been told to watch it. It's a good one. Yeah. It's, a, it's on Netflix now. Okay. There's, there's some cool episodes of that show that I really like. Um, and there's one where it's, you know, how a TV show will do like a clip show episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's like, the um, worst. No, no, I know. And they set up for it like it's a clip show. And then the clips they flash back to have never happened on the show. <laughs> That's good. It, it's a good one. I like the one where, for some reason, friends had sand on the floor and the one chick shaves her head and then they pee on Monica. Oh, they're in, the, they're in, the, they're in Florida, I think? Yeah, they, they take a vacation. That's a vacation. They take a vacation. I could do that one. Uh, there, there's a few, you know. Um, I was trying to think of something else. I, I like the, the final... Uh, um, show of uh, of God Seinfeld. I like oh that. yeah, Seinfeld. I mean, Seinfeld's got so many all timers. Uh, shrinkage would be another good one. I could yeah. probably do Shrinkage over there. The bet it was funny. Yeah. The bet where they they're bet. in the contest, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, where they yeah, who's not gonna touch? I'm them. out. I'm out. I'm out. And she gives up. She goes, I attack myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, i think that's the definitive that's the best one it, it probably is that's probably the one i would watch which uh, uh brings me to a quick story and then we're gonna let you finish this off brett yeah. uh my story is one of uh intensity it's one of radio and it's one of uh stopping uh the birth of a of a of a baby with somebody you hardly know so it's a little little i know i know i see the look on you I didn't know what had happened. I had met a girl doing a promotion. We were working. Um, I can't think of this place. It's like an old school sports bar and it's over off of uh, uh, Claremont and then Briarcliff. It's over somewhere. It's a football bar and it's in a uh, shopping center. Oh, and I know the name of it too. Yeah. I used to live next to it because I lived at Claremont 85 and it That's- sucks. Yeah, yeah, and that's worst service. Was. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah. bad service. It's a very large location. It has a back room with some pool tables and arcades. It has a front room with some booths, and uh, I did gigs there. And I was in the back room uh, working with one of the beers and the beer girl. And I hit it off. And we're hanging out, and we go back to my place. Uh, we watch a movie for about ten minutes. Then we do what what you do, and then she's like, uh, "Oh God, you got to get me back to my car." And I'm like, "Lord have mercy." So I'm driving her back to her car at literally 4.30 to go to the radio station at about 5, 5.15. Get her back to her car, we're, you know, and I'm like, cool. And then I, I'm i doing afternoons, but I had to go back to the radio station to do something for the morning show. I had to do something with the regular guys, but I was doing afternoons too. Yeah. So I leave, go back home. Then I'm there doing afternoons, and it was Southside and Roads. And I get a phone call, and Kevin, our, our producer, and I'm like, dude, this girl's outside. And I said, can you go down and see what she wants? She didn't want to tell me. So I send my producer instead of me. He comes back up. He goes, dude, she wants to take the morning after pill. She thinks that maybe y'all screwed up. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, well, how much is that? And uh, and she's like $140 or something like that. And she was going, oh. over, and she was going over to Piedmont Hospital to get it. And we were at Collier Road, uh, Caddy Corner to Piedmont Hospital. And I'm like, that's a lot of damn money. And of course, we start talking about it on air, which I'm like, oh God. And, and do you know how she, much they cost at Costco now? I have no idea. Anybody want to take a guess? A plan B? No. And I don't know this because I'm married. Yeah. So, no, like they're like seven dollars. Mm. I, I was gonna guess twelve. I know they're kind of cheap. Yeah, they're right? super cheap now. These right. be so, I, you can buy plan B at like I don't want to say a dollar general, but I remember seeing it somewhere. God, where was oh, I? God. Damn it. All right. This is not interesting. I can't remember. You, where don't, go through the line. <laughs> you don't go through the line at dollar general and say, I'll take a pack of gum, one of those plan B's. And oh yeah, give me a condom. <laughs> I mean, but so I'm like, well, what the hell? That's a lot of money. And I'm like, you know, and we're like discussing, is it a money grab or not? So I told Kevin, I said, here's my credit card. You got to go with her. So our producer went with her over to the hospital she got the pill. She took it. He paid for it and came back and said it was totally legit. I never saw her again. I couldn't pick her out of a lineup. I don't know her first name. And I bought some girl Plan B. But I was like, all right, we're 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 just being safe. I, I feel pretty good about it. But if you think we need to do this. So it was 12 hours after we had, you know, had fun in relations and never saw her again. 
and bought a plan B. So that was, that was just a weird damn day for me, you know? And does that make me a bad person? I hope not. Yep. Does it? Yeah. Not, no, <laughs> no, not, it's, it's, it's a points game. It's a points game. And I think that you have more oh. good points than bad points. But when I say that this contributed to your good points, <laughs> you just sounded like Adam Sandler. <laughs> All right, now hold on. I didn't want to do anything bad, but it was her idea, and I thought everything was fine, and everything turned out it would have been fine because <laughs> the only person I ever got pregnant is my wife, and I tried, and I did. That's it, right? <laughs> so I don't know. All uh, right. I felt there's a part of me that felt bad being raised, you know, the way I was raised, and I'm like, God oh, dang, what do I, what do I say? I can't. Do I say no? You know? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's not my body. It's hers. She wants to do this. I'm like, oh my god. You know, she, she wasn't, we didn't know whether she was pregnant or not. I want to believe she never was. She just wasn't taking a chance. So there goes. Mm. That make me better. No. I, it's my favor. She Dude, I just, I gave you the price as a plan B. So like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you here. Like, it's not as if you're the only one in this situation. I know I hear you, but, but I want to believe she was not and took it and I blew 150 bucks, but whatever it was, what it was. All right. Finish us off. Good. I'm glad that we're doing finish me off here because this one's a little dark this week. Uh, darker my damn story. I don't know what's happened to this. <laughs> and it's Masters week. It should be lively and green and We loving. should be talking about golf, but you know what? Yeah. Look at what some of our golfers do. I don't want to point out Tiger Woods, but look at what I he tried. did. Uh, all right. Man ends his life after an AI chat bot encouraged him to sacrifice himself to stop blank. A uh, one shirt guy. That's not funny. <laughs> not funny, Evan. I didn't write that to make fun of you. Yeah, you did. Hurt. I did not. <laughs> hey, I did. I only Man. sold one shirt this month. Come on.com. Uh, Man ends his life after an AI chat bot encouraged him to sacrifice himself to stop blank. To stop um, the invasion of uh, Martians. Evan? Oh, uh, that's a good one. Oh, uh, to stop uh the to stop the rapture. Ooh. All right, this is that Greta Thunberg one. It's a climate change. Man uh -oh. basically committed suicide after an AI bot encouraged him to sacrifice himself to stop climate change. Let's keep getting darker, boys. Okay. Con the Bible challenged in Utah for the being Bible too long. <laughs> yeah. Being too popular. Who's got that much time? Um, uh, prisoners. Being too, being too, uh, being too <laughs> guys cryptic. in hotels. Being too cryptic. No, not enough pictures. <laughs> Actually, I could ride with that, Steve. I almost want to make that right because the Bible needs. I was listening to a show the other day and they were like, you know, kids, they love books. It's so great. They love books. It's like, yeah, but at some point they take the pictures out and then books suck you know like, i gotta have a picture dude yeah, like I when you're a kid a you love books with the pictures and then all of a sudden it's just words and you're like That's damn what? there's a lot all right the bible challenged in utah for explicit sexual content also there are books with pictures they're called comic books wow yeah y'all i know i know i get that and there is sexual you know i have this issue with my son he goes to a christian school and he comes home and he's telling the story of noah and how god spoke to him and he and then he's reading you know this he, you know, and then he saw a cartoon and he's reading, he's watching the cartoon and the cartoon I thought was too tough. It said, Noah, I will, I will have to kill everyone, but you will survive. And I'm like, Whoa, Brooks, Brooks God doesn't say kill. He doesn't say that, you know, you're not learning That's that old Testament school. stuff. Yeah, you're not learning that at school. We don't say kill. So I had to stop. That was like something my grandparents would show me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. We got to <laughs> focus more on the veggie tales. But he's so curious. I told him about the dogwood. I just hung this morning a uh, birdhouse and I told him the dogwood no longer grows straight because that was used as the wood on the cross for the crucifixion. And they talked about it at school. So he's aware that Jesus was crucified. He wanted to know why he was nailed and not tied like the other two. And you great know, question. And I'm like, okay. You know, so we go through these things and I'm telling him, look at the leaf. The dogwood leaf has imprints, you know, and those are where the nails were in the crown. It has like a little blood print on, on each leaf. And I said, that's what it was made of. And God said, this, uh, this tree will never grow straight and never be able to be used again uh, for crucifixion. And that's why the dogwood grows crooked. 
And I told him that story. And I learned that from my grandmother. I don't know if that's true, but it sounds good. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just the crazy. But you get those questions. And, you know, we're, we're having to go back to church. I just, his Christian school is great, and they're teaching prayer. But because he's interested in it, he gets on that damn YouTube, not normal kids YouTube. He can still find stuff. And I Dude, kids YouTube is a crazy, crazy place because crazy, crazy people make content for it. Because, I know. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, dude, that, that is a seedy, disgusting underbelly that really like, because it's yes. so innocent and it should be so easy to just be like, how do I oh, not yeah, know I about to... kids YouTube? Like I am learning so much. <laughs> oh my God. It, people will make for some reason. I don't know why, but there are these like videos of like, Adults dressing as like Elsa from Frozen and Spider Man, and they'll like pee on each other and stuff. Look, and it's like for kids. It's like, what's hi. up, hi, buddy? Hi. Speaking of kids media, <laughs> you are what I was just saying. Hey, Never listen to this podcast. Ask Brooks if he's seen the Elsa Spider Man video. Don't ask him that. He's got a frog in his hand. All right, take real a frog. My wife, my 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 wife will hold. Come here, Parker. You say hi hey, too. We'll do. do you want to say hi, Parker? Huh? Park, Park, Parker, a baby. He said Parker's a baby. He talks uh. about himself in the third person. It's pretty funny. Parker, do. Let Parker do. He's funny. But yeah, my wife will pick up anything, and she's teaching Brooks to pick up frogs, lizards, and whatever. I don't pick up anything. I step on shit. Just women. Yeah, women. So what else you got? All right. I'm still shocked for this. We're being kid's PG YouTube. because there's a kid this kid's hey, YouTube. Uh, no, hell no. I'm still all, rolling, all baby. I'm saying is if you are someone who makes content disguised for children because you're trying to hack the algorithm to get views and you're making like disgusting content for kids. I kind of hate you and think you're maybe yeah. the worst person. I don't like you either. There is nothing like right here. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. This is the innocence of a child. Look at that child. Look how innocent that baby is. Hey baby. What you want to get down? Okay. So there's no way I want them. So this kid's YouTube, we look at it and I'm like, Amanda's running hurt on it. I'm running hurt on it. I'm like, just watch the cartoons. Watch Blippy, and even that guy is creepy to me, but he's he's innocent. When you find yeah, at out, least he's just like a guy, right? Like he's not he's just doing kids entertainment, right? Dude, you I find out so his out of back, the loop on this kid's stuff. Yeah. Blippy, oh yeah, find, it's yeah. here. I'll send you. I'm gonna send you an article, but yeah, it's it's like so. There's it's a warning, real. you know. We're we're good. We're good people. We joke about crazy stuff, but yeah, keep your kids or if you if they're on kids YouTube, monitor that. Get yeah, them. I would. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm sitting well because like you know like my brother's kids my niece and nephew are the same age as steve's kids and but like every time we i see them we're like we watch like lion king yeah or we play, we play like a board game or something like they don't get a ton oh, of screen time so i don't know still on. We're still we literally on. have two questions all right i'll knock these out real two quick questions go quick all right fill in my gap proposed state bill aims to eliminate blank in youth sports proposed state bill aims to oh. eliminate blank in youth parents sports. eliminate parents that's a good one but that's not right uh eliminate kissing players can't kiss each other <laughs> no more participation trophies Sure. Uh, Most state I agree. bill in North Carolina wants to get rid of participation. Nobody trophies. wants them anyway. The, everybody, like, parents kids. are always like, "Oh, they ruined this generation." It's like I didn't want this piece of crap. Like, it's, yeah, right. don't give my kid a fifth place trophy. Uh, <laughs> All yeah. right, here's the last one. I'm going for it. the wife told me not to do this one, but whatever. It's not that bad. Twenty five well, employees walk out of. <laughs> okay, sorry. sorry 25 employees walk out after a Pennsylvania restaurant owner names drinks blank and blank. 25 employees walk out after Pennsylvania restaurant owner names drinks blank and blank. Amos oh. and Andy. <laughs> yeah, they were like, we're out. Those, those references are way too dated. <laughs> I'm going out safe, man. That's, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm going to go Bert and Ernie and also go play. Well, Laurel All right. and Hardy. All right, Laurel I'm going Hardy. for it. Whatever. The Negro <laughs> and the Caucasian. Siskel and Ebert. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, the Negro oh, and the Caucasian. One's a white Russian, the other one's Jaeger. I'm that, was, to... that was my guess. It was like one, maybe like um, uh, what's the 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 coffee everyone drinks? Because I don't drink coffee, and everyone gets like wish. Oh, I don't drink. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a big coffee guy. You know what? In, in the espresso hey, martini. Espresso oh. martini. My wife loves. That's that. yeah. Women love those things. Love them. Love. Them. I guess yeah. it's better if it's like. Uh, I mean, definitely don't do that. Right. That's a, those are bad cocktail names, but I wouldn't do it, dude. Just why because... would you not name, just name it Yin and Yang? Yeah, yeah. right. That's right, right, right. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. It's just not worth the hell you're gonna catch, and there's no reason. There's no reason. there's no reason. There's no reason. No reason. 
Because no one's going to order that either. Because I'm not going to say that. Me either. Yeah. I'll say I'll say Caucasian. I'll say Caucasian. I'll be like, yeah, I really would rather have the other one. But when the waiter comes, like, I, I can't. I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> it's the whole thing. White people can make fun of white people, and black people can make fun of black people. But when you, but black people can also make fun of white people. They're really good at it. And and it's pretty damn funny. And you got to be able to laugh at yourself. I laugh anytime a, a comedian makes fun of white people. I think it's hilarious. It's true. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just that's. But you can't go the other direction. Fish in a barrel. Yeah. There you go. But uh, whatever, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just living in the world. I didn't make the rules. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, if you get a chance and you're waking up early, have some legends, yet come on bourbon whiskey, buy something on yet come on.com so I can sell more than one shirt. And I'm telling you, I know that the, uh, that it's expensive, $10 for post. I'll throw in something free when you order. Okay. And if you, if you order over a hundred dollars, I'll pay for your shipping. There you go. Doing a little side gig. How about that? Yeah, but I am Southside Steve. That is Brett Barney. That is Evan Brando. And we woke up early on a Sunday to entertain you. Thank you for following us and pass it along, man. Uh, we've seen some uh, growth and I think people want to laugh and hopefully you dig where we're coming from. I like us. Hopefully you like us too. Yeah, come on. Can I get a yeah, come on? Yeah, come yeah, on. Come on. All right. Okay. <laughs> Brett, we were, uh, we were definitely, I was thinking on that one. <laughs>